everybody Hi. this is Corey and this is Chetney and we are young black educated and love and we want to welcome you to the first episode and we thank you for tuning in a lot of you saw me in videos talking to young ladies about dating but I always refer to this beautiful woman that I absolutely love and now you get a chance to meet her and this is Chetney so I'm gonna let her just tell you a little bit about herself Hi everybody, uh, I am so excited to be a part of this movement and actually I've been a part for a while but just now uh, for the first time coming in front of the camera as opposed to being behind it. I um, What we hoped for my involvement was to bring another side to this whole thing which is a female perspective. Um, in Corey's book so far and in his presentations and his talks what you've heard is the male perspective, which is very, very, very important, clearly, as, as we know, but it's also important to hear the female perspective as well, not only for the ladies in uh, his audience or in the our audience, but also for the males to understand a little bit more about how we think and how we feel. So um, again, that's what, I, that's what we're hoping that I will be able to, that's what I plan actually, to bring to um, this movement and uh, this series in particular. Yep, and so if you look at the title, the title is Young, Black, Educated, and In Love. Let's break that down. Young, I think we're both the young. When we get 75, we're still going to be young, and we're going to move. We're still going to be moving and grooving and hitting the dance floor still, just like the young folks. But we still feel young right now. Uh, we're both are black, if you see. Look at our hair. Black. So we are young and black, and we absolutely love being black. And that's one of the reasons we really wanted to do do this because we feel the media doesn't give black people the the a positive light. I would say we watch these shows. What shows we be watching? You have me watching. Oh, the Housewives of Atlanta, of oh, course. Lord. And I sit there um, and watch it too. The Basketball Wives. Oh, we just watched the season finale of that. She had me watching that stuff, and I'd be mm -hmm. into it too. That's the sad thing is I don't only watch it now. I'm into it like. Oh, she shouldn't have did yeah, that. Yeah, like he knows her name. You know, and, and their you know, scenarios and, and like everything. Like Nene and all them, man. I know about Nene and Phaedra and all y'all. Yeah, I do. But sometimes those shows put black couples in a bad light. Um, well, this doesn't always give the full picture, you know. I mean, I think black couples, just like all couples, go through divorce and you know all don't make it or some have issues, but. I don't think there's enough of those relationships, black relationships in the media that do make it and that, you know, are um, very positive and that, you know, are happy for the most part. We just don't get to see that. We see Michelle and Barack and we see, um, you know, Beyonce and Jay-Z, I suppose, or we see Will and Jada, but that's it. But it seems like there's more of the opposite. Well, there's some, some real black couples out there. I mean, of course, right, exactly. that's that's television. Yes, and yes. so, I mean, that's television. That's celebrity. No, that's Hollywood. That's mm -hmm. what we see. And so we want to give you something else because yes. we feel like we have a good relationship. Of course, we have our little disagreements. You know, I whoop her in Scrabble. And then, you know, we may I'll have an argument. And, and Jim Rummy, right? Dang, yes. you got your boy. You got, she got your boy. She got me. She got me. But we wanted to just show you um, that we are happy, and we want to tell you and share some of the things, some of our situation. We're going to talk about good and bad. I know some people can come on and always act like everything is perfect all the time. We had, uh, in getting into our topics, we wanted to give you a few topics. The first one is, I am not my hair. And it's not about my hair, because clearly, <laughs> yes. I don't have any hair. Um, I'm trying to braid, get it braided, but... They told me I couldn't braid it, but we're talking about her hair because if even if you saw the intro, you saw the picture, her graduation picture, and she had the long straight hair, and she wanted to get back to her roots, and it was a process. Was it a process? Yes, it was definitely a process. For all of you sisters out there who have 
transition from relaxed hair to natural hair all of my fellow naturels you all know what a tough process this can be um not a knock to my relax sisters because clearly I was there just about a little over a year ago but again it is a, a difficult process or can be and it was definitely a trying one for both Corey and I and he had his side and his view and his perspective and I had mine and so we're going to talk about how we went through that process together and how we kind of made it through it wasn't you know this this detrimental uh situation mm. in our relationship but it it was to her it, <laughs> But it definitely took I'm some, busy. it definitely took a lot of communication and kind of us kind of, you know, massaging the process and going through it together. So we'll talk about that. And to finish the, the title, educated, a lot of people think we're talking about education from the standpoint that both of us are working on these terminal degrees. Yes. Or actually, no, you are done with yours. I'm still working. Mm -hmm. I'm still working on my degree. But no, education is bigger than that. We're not telling you you have to go and pursue PhDs. No, that's crazy. That that's that's it's not for everyone. What we are saying is whatever you need to be successful with what you want to do in life, go and get it. And also education from another light. Tell them about the other light you explained education. So we were talking earlier, and I thought that um, one of the other aspects of education that would be important to point out is we also hope to, through our stories, through our testimony, our experiences, hope to help to give you the information that you also need to be more educated about the relationships you enter into, about, um, let's say you want to go to grad school, about the programs you enter into, about the uh, specific disciplines you may decide to go into. So. Um, about your relationship so we hope again through our personal experiences and testimonies that we can empower you and arm you with the information to help you be educated and make the the best decisions um, for you um, as it as it pertains to those to those um, things your relationships or like I said school or whatever so that's another way of looking at education and um, for our series and the last part is in love because I'm in love. You. I hope you. She. Hold on. Let me rephrase that. She better be in love. <laughs> no, but in love because we want to show you that we are in love. And so we're going to talk about ways that, you know, one of our topics on here is where's the one I'm thinking about? Because we have we have like twenty list. list of things to talk about. But if she just wants to hear it, and part of the in love process, even because sometimes when you know you're in love. You don't feel like you necessarily have to say the thing you said when you were trying to get her. Guys, I'm talking to you. And so sometimes she just want to hear it. You beautiful girl. I'm talking to you. No, okay. but um, no, basically tell her she wants to hear that she's beautiful. She wants to hear that you love her. And not that she don't already know that, that, that's, uh, 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 that that's the way you feel. But she just wants to hear it. She wants that reassurance security. So we're going to talk about that. Because honestly, she helped me come to the conclusion of that. Because I was stubborn. I was like, you already know I love you, baby. But, you know, you already know that. You're beautiful. I tell you that all the time. She just wanted to hear it. And so for men, this, having me here uh, will help to give a female perspective. Right. Um, and let you know how important that is to us. It may not make a whole lot of sense to you all. But it definitely is a reality, I think, for several women. So we'll right. talk about that as well. Another one we're going to talk about is distance relationships. Um, we, um, as many of you may not know, we're in a, rela a distance relationship for two years. Over, a little over two years. A little over two years before we finally came together. And that was definitely a, a trying process as well. There were several things that we came to an agreement on up front that helped us to navigate our relationship. Uh, we'll talk about how communication was important, um, how the visiting, the physical aspect of our relationship, and I, by physical I mean us actually getting to physically see one another, how important that was. So we'll go into detail about that. And it's, it's, it's so many on here. We can't get through all of them in right. this first episode. But we want to um, go ahead and close and say thank you again for viewing this. And we are going to have these viewing every Monday. Yes, and so Monday. hopefully Monday mornings. But if not Monday morning, it would be posted someday. 
sometime on Monday. Sometime on Monday. And look out for my videos continuing on Thursdays, and we're working together, and hopefully eventually we can start one for Chutney. So uh, we'd like to say thank you again, and we look forward to doing more videos for you. So thank you. Thank you. And have a great, great day. Bye-bye.